Are we ready to go? Yep. Sir, we'll go ahead and call this. Is there agenda, Mrs. Mayor? It's back there, maybe. Oh, thank you. Thank you we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Special meeting of the council. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's have a roll call. Councilmember Shippers. Here. Ellen Boss. Here. Ingalls. Here. King. Here. Mayor Falcons. Here. And if we could have a motion to approve the agenda, please. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Support. Councilmember Ellen Boss. Yes. Ingalls. Yes. King. Yes. Shippers. Yes. Mayor Falcons. Yes. Motion carries. This time we'll open the floor for public comment. Seeing no one, we'll close public comment and uh, move on to the consideration of vehicle benefit and award of bid. Thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. I uh, really appreciate everyone's time uh, to come back after we uh, were just together this past Monday. And thank you again to everybody for your continued support, discussion, conversation, and, and just everything. As I commented on Monday, uh, wouldn't be here if not for not for such a great organization and community, and certainly City Council is wonderful to work with. Uh, and I truly, I truly mean that. Um, as uh, everybody knows, uh, we uh, essentially tabled uh, the vehicle benefit component of our conversation Monday evening. Uh, per the request of City Council to obtain some additional details and clarification. Uh, the Council communication this morning uh, outlines that information and Owen, I apologize if I'm putting you on the spot, but would you mind just sort of walking through the, the bullets or the chart um, somewhat, somewhat briefly? Uh, sure, <laughs> let me pull it up. Okay. Well, and I can, while well, you're pulling it up, I can, I can I actually you. walk people through it, but, uh, yeah, so just, uh, I mean, okay. sure. I got it. Okay. Um, which you're talking the auto chart or the other chart, the auto the, chart. Um, so yeah, we just researched some, um, estimates online and then took into account, um, the uh, the value of the purchase with a 10-year estimated life residual some residual value um, which calculated out based on 10 years at four thousand um, dollars an estimate of maintenance repairs um, our insurance is is <clears throat> is lower than the uh, the estimates used online um, did an estimate for for fuel, not knowing exactly what the mileage will be, um, you know, anticipating that uh, that gas will remain main high, but but uh, not quite as high as it is currently, and then and es estimated an annual registration uh, with a total annual cost of about nine thousand um, dollars. Estimates range from from around nine thousand up to just over ten thousand, but those always included. Uh, a higher level of insurance and and the averages would have included paying taxes on the vehicle initially which would be a couple grand six percent of the purchase price which the city does not have to pay so estimated the the cost then of that benefit at 9150 per year and then the other um uh, the other sort of calculus that we put together is is just underneath that chart uh, going back and and you know trying to address some of the questions and discussion from City Council this past Monday night in regard to uh, you know the overall compensation adjustment essentially this go around um, is equivalent to approximately eleven thousand one hundred nine dollars and fifty eight cents when you take into consideration the um, uh, four percent uh, COLA adjustment that was approved along with the two percent uh, inflation premium so we were trying to come up and flesh out essentially as much of the, the data as we possibly could given especially given just some of the assumptions that we had available to us on the on the vehicle itself i don't know is there anything else on that i know we talked about trying to explain the different parts which you just did in the chart so and the chart we created was based on 
again, information that we were able to find r relatively accessible online. So. Okay. All right. Um, Steve, you brought some information too. Would you yes. like to go ahead and present that? As, as I said Monday night, my concern was is with our fiduciary responsibility, making sure we know what the costs involved are and what the increase in the compensation package is. Because I think that's critical to know whether we're properly increasing it, increasing it within reasonable limits, or going overshooting, uh, especially because we're using the taxpayer dollar. Um, with the information from the uh, council communication, I was just, I was concerned and wanted to make sure council understood what the compensation increases with the different requests were, and I'll go through that in a minute. And two, the fact that like, going through evaluation of the vehicle, I thought the numbers, looking at the city uh, communication, the council com communication, were extremely low. Um, and that coupled with my concerns that I really couldn't find anywhere that it would be recommended to allow the manager to use the vehicle uh, for personal use because of the possible liability uh, consequences to the city if he were to get in an accident or if a family member got in an accident in a city vehicle. Uh, and, and I don't believe in the city communication that the insurance accounts for notifying our insurance carrier that we're going to allow a vehicle used for exclusive use for one employee for personal use and I think that's something we have to consider very seriously. Um, finally before I go through this I'm concerned we are making uh, a minimum uh, per the request of a $45,000 uh, appropriation and I think that that appropriation has to be looked at under uh, Section 5.6, Special Requirements for Council Actions, appropriating any money, uh, which is uh, number 5, uh, B5, uh, and it would require a four-fifths vote. Saying that, what I did to walk Council through it is that number one, it was to give us where are we now, as of the Council meeting on Monday. Um, we know what the base compensation is for last year. That was 111, 177, 17. We know the car allowance was 4,800. So excluding any other benefits, health or otherwise, that brought, it, brought us to a total year compensation of $115,977.17. Um, I put the one-time inflation, the 2% separately, because uh, I wanted council to be able to see it both ways. Even though it's a, only a one-time payment this year, it still is the value of the compensation being increased for this year's contract. Uh, whether anything else is approved after that year is a separate issue because that would be renegotiated again. So what I did is uh, showed council that just on what we did Monday night uh, with uh, those additions, there is a 6% increase of manager compensation. When we add the inflationary bump on that, it's a 7.9% increase in one year without considering a vehicle being added to that compensation package. Um, number two, and, and underneath that I have my concern, again, the without any parameters regarding uh, personal use, I, I think it's a real problem. Uh, for the city and for the council, in my opinion. Number two, what I did is took the rule of thumb of uh, valuing the car based on the IRS reimbursement rate for 2022 against uh, uh, Owen's uh, estimate of 18,000 miles for that year. I think that mileage is low if it's personal miles and on top of that. and. And there's a problem that when Owen did the depreciation, this isn't a criticism of you, Owen. This is just the way I calculated it. If the miles go over 18,000, it throws the whole value out of whack because the depreciation is affected by that. And also the gas and fuel price is, is affected by that. But under number two, I again took the uh, base value for next year uh, which we now know is 115624 and added to that 
uh, the value of the car as I calculated and explained. Uh, and that comes out to a final compensation for next year of uh, $154.27. I then used the simple formula for figuring out change of percentage for compensation. I took the new rate minus the old rate, uh, divided by the old rate, and without the one-time 2% increase, it's an 8.8% increase in compensation. And when we add in the one-time uh, bump, it's a 10.75% increase in compensation. Number three, when I went to salaries.com uh, and another uh, recruiting site called AdGrad that tries to help employees determine what's better, salary with a company car or salary without a company car, I got two different rule of thumb ways to uh, value the car. Under the AdGrad uh, article from 2018, uh, it indicated that the values of cars in 2018 were a minimum of 10 to 18 thousand dollars and that was for a small or mid-sized American sedan so that's two years old I calculated using the 18,000 because we're getting a full-sized uh, vehicle doing that that would increase the total compensation for next year to or value of compensation to one hundred and thirty three thousand six hundred and twenty four dollars and twenty six cents again when we calculate the percentage increase in the compensation package Without the one-time 2% uh, inflationary increase, it's a 15.22% increase in compensation for this position. When we add that in, it's a 17% increase, 17.21% increase. That's why I was concerned on Monday of even doing the raise that was already approved by council without understanding what the numbers would be with the added value of the car. I, I think that's a real concern. And then I went on to list my concerns. And these are just my personal concerns. Uh, I believe 18,000 is too low, especially when we're saying personal and business use. Um, I'm concerned that we're not limiting uh, out-of-state travel or in-state travel when we have personal use uh, because of the liability uh, for the city. Next, um, I think that we, and this, this relates back up to my number two, you'll see after the first line it says C note four, this is the note four. 18,000 miles times the 58.5 cents per mile gives us that minimum value of 10,530. And I think that's the minimum we should use. Um, the uh, more, just to give us a, a swag, a scientific, wild you know what guess um, I said even if we bumped it to 25,000 miles for personal and business use we're up to fourteen thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars is the value to the compensation package uh, finally my concern is I, I don't think we can use 450 we're at 520 right now uh, the articles that I read are saying we're going to see six dollars uh, a gallon minimally and this is over the projection over the next year so I don't think that we can say or look at 450 uh, a gallon um, in uh, relation to that also by having unlimited mileage and gas we have no control over that expense there there were articles I don't know if anyone saw last or yesterday on, on M live and there were others Isabella County's in a crisis right now because they don't know that they can afford gas at this price for their emergency services. Mm -hmm. And I think we really need to consider the perception in the public about giving one employee unlimited gas for personal use. And we don't know if that's going to have an effect on what we budgeted already for fuel or how it'll affect our emergency services. So I'm very concerned uh, about that aspect of it. I did my own summary, so this is me, it's no one else. Uh, we're being asked to give one employee uh, a city car with unlimited personal gas in a year that gas is going up over 520 uh, per gallon. Um, I did 
uh, make some calls. My understanding was is that when the city of Cadillac previously had a car for the manager, it was only for use for city business. It was not allowed for personal use, and that was because of the uh, not only the liability reasons, but the difficulty of calculating the effect of the personal use of the car and what had to be charged back, et cetera. Even if there's an accounting for the gas as an added income to the manager position, who's auditing it? Whose decision is how much was personal and how much uh, is business? You go to the pump, you fill up, it's going to be hard to figure that out. So I think that's, that's a large concern. Uh, again, we're being asked uh, to give one employee a city car uh, when we don't have other members of our staff that have a city car. Um, and what effect that's going to be. And I'm very concerned about when we look at what the actual increase in the compensation package is, mm -hmm. is the perception in relation to other city staff of an increase of this size in one year. Um, down a ways, I bring it up, you know, we, we had some spirited conversations uh, in, in Council Member uh, Ellenboss was very vocal uh, about not wanting to raise city water and sewer taxes. Uh, because of increasing costs. And I absolutely supported that because that, that's the responsible thing to do. This is what we need to do to maintain our system. And you know, I, I realize it pinches the taxpayer, but that's the fiscally responsible thing to do. I can't now say that I did that and I can look those same taxpayers in the eye and say, well, you're struggling to get to work at AAR or any of the factories in the area and struggling to fill your tank of gas we could raise sewer and, and water taxes on you, but we've got enough money that we can pay the manager's position. Unlimited gas and unlimited personal miles. I, I just, I, I don't see how we could do that uh, to the taxpayers of uh, Cadillac. Um, again, I've already said I'm, I'm concerned the numbers were way too conservative, especially because we don't have control over the mileage or the gas. Um, the uh, manager's contract is unique because it's an annual contract. It's a one-year contract. It gets renegotiated every year. I'm very concerned at our union seeing this going, wait a minute, one person could get a 17% bump in one year and you guys are holding us back to low single-digit increases, if any. Um, I do, as I said, I believe that the purchase of the car is an appropriation of city uh, funds requiring uh, a vote of four more members uh, pursuant to section 5.6, open paren, small b, close paren, open paren, five, close paren. Um, and my final, it, it comes down to fiscal, that, you know, we talked about it um, in the sense that there, there is absolutely arguments for a vehicle for the manager to use for city business only. I don't think we can say personal use and unlimited gas. And because we already gave the raise that we did, I don't think we can consider this this year because it effectively turns out to be over a 17% raise if those numbers are correct. And I use those for argument only. I think they're much higher, but I think 17% in this day and age is staggering and sends the wrong message. Uh, to the uh, taxpayers. Um, so I have a question. I didn't mm -hmm. cut you. No, 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 you're fine. Um, you know, I, I absolutely believe that uh, providing a city vehicle for the manager to do bus city business, um, driving here in Cadillac and representing our city when, you know, he has people that he needs to move about, et cetera, et cetera. Um, are you supportive? of getting that vehicle for business only? The answer to that, Mayor, is I believe in that argument, and it would have been yes, but because we made the decision to increase the compensation in a vacuum without considering it, I don't think we can do it this year. I think we have to wait to do that. So would I be supportive if that idea is brought back next year? Absolutely. I'd, I'd want to look at it and have a discussion about it. But it's got to be negotiated in relation to an overall package, an overall compensation package. So I have a, I have a question. Um, first of all, you you made a statement that it's a one year contract. I disagree. Um, Mike, is it is it a it does Marcus have a one year contract or doesn't he have a continuing contract? And we um, 
I, I believe that it just sustains and that we can adjust it as we see fit. But it's not like every year we renegotiate a contract. Is that true? We amend it. Well, what I will say is that um, it is an undefined term, um, but because of the way um, the uh, valuation works, as well as um, the uh, look at compensation issues on an on an annual basis, um, the city annually has amended the contract to deal with any compensation changes on a year-to-year -year basis. So you're right that if if you did nothing, uh, the contract would continue on at the same rate. Okay. So can we respond to um, your second to last point that the purchase of the car for the, or Steve's second to last point, that uh, the purchase of the car for the city manager is an appropriation of city funds requiring the vote of four more members? Yeah, um, so it, that's a complicated issue um, because of two reasons. One is um, if we are saying, um, and I've had to deal with this a lot recently on a different subject, um, but same principle, which is uh, annually the city adopts a budget. If you are spending money within that budget, um, then it is not a new appropriation of any money. If, however, you are also amending the budget, um, then it, is, it would be an additional appropriation of money requiring a four-fifths vote under that section of the charter. So I don't know off the top of my head uh, whether or not these are funds within the existing budget already approved by the city. They are as far as... Owen and I understand there's available dollars within the general fund within but, this fiscal year. But, but it's not an part, item that was budgeted. I'm sorry, Mayor. Yeah, but yeah. it wasn't an item that we approved when we approved the budget. The dollars might be there, but it wasn't something that That's correct. we yep. had on our mm -hmm. radar yep. that we approved at budget time. I do like what you were saying earlier. I think that was a nice um, attempt at a compromise to get a wire car um, for business use. But it does seem like I, th I think your um, <coughs> probably applies. Mm -hmm. you, know. you know, I think, and based on the vote on uh, Monday night, you know, I think um, I think we're done. Yep. No. Yes. What I heard Mike say, and, and I mean, it, it makes I'm understanding it the same way I, that Steve is, I guess, mm -hmm. and based on what Mike confirmed, because you'd have to be moving from the general fund to the city manager's budget or, or whatever type of accounting, <coughs> you know, thing we're going to vote on for budgetary um, amendment. Yeah. But we we do, you know, and I don't think we do anything <laughs> illegally, but throughout the course of the year. We do budget transfers all the time with dollars that have been appropriated. That's right. When we approve, when we approve a muffin muncher, there's money um, available in the thing, and we don't have to have four you votes for that. I, I think muncher. it's <laughs> dangerous. Budgeted for that, and and I think the taxpayer would say it's a semantical game to say. When you have a vehicle that wasn't budgeted, a $45,000 vehicle, to try to say that we're shifting money and it doesn't require approval. And, and I think like we do with the police cars, there are different things that we do that Owen comes back to us with a budget amendment so that we approve, whether it's a plow truck, a fire truck, uh, a vehicle, and especially in a situation when it's a vehicle for one employee for personal use, boy, I wouldn't want the scrutiny on that of trying to make a decision that we can somehow shift money without accounting for it the appropriate way as required by charter can you talk um jump into a slightly different topic mike about city managers that have cars that use them for personal use um is there anything in our charter that says we can't use funds towards an employee's personal uh, like is that just part of his contract can you talk about city managers that have a car for personal use well there, <coughs> there are most um most city managers with employment contracts have various different benefits in them. Some of them may include vehicles, some of them may include 
allowances for vehicles. Either way, it's the same thing, right? Where you are as a condition of employment paying a, a benefit. And I think that the payment of that benefit is lawful because it's tied to the employment, even if it is for personal use. Because dollars are fungible, you can't really distinguish between what car allowance funds are used for business use versus personal use. So I don't think there's a distinction um, between those two issues. Um, and notwithstanding that, there is a tax implication too. So. It, even though um, he may the the manager may be able to use it for personal use, there is a tax implication from that as well. So it's not I, I wouldn't call it like um, a free use of a vehicle. There's a taxation component of that. And I don't pretend to be an accountant, um, so I won't tell you what that tax implication is, except that it would be taxable to the employee as a benefit, like like most other benefits. Okay. But I want to go back to the budget issue too, and I understand the policy arguments, and I'll let um, the council deal with the policy arguments. But if I appropriated in a um, in a budget, um, let's say one million dollars in the general fund um, that could be spent is unrestricted monies um, that can be spent on anything, um, any public purpose, obviously, uh, without coming back to the city council as an additional appropriation of money. You've already appropriated that money for the expenditure. Now, it, I'll let council decide on whether or not it wants to um, um, further address additional appropriations when it's already appropriated the money, but unless and until it's going to result in a budget amendment, I don't view that as an additional appropriation of money under the special requirements for council action of the charter under 5.6. The money has already been appropriated through the existing budget. Now, again, I'm not weighing in on the policy issues. I'll let the council deal with that. Um, but I don't, it, as long as this is not resulting in a uh, budget um, change or a budget amendment that it's within the dollars used are within the existing appropriation of the budget, then it's not an additional appropriation of money. And, and the only thing I would respond to that, Mike, is if that if your analysis were true then we would just appropriate more money for our budget that's undesignated every year and use it however we want and that's not what the charter was set up for that is well a, you kind of do that you kind of do that anyways right because you do not um every time a bill comes in for something you do not reappropriate to pay that bill but it's already budgeted well, not everything is budgeted, right? I mean, there are things that are simply just not budgeted, not contemplated, and yet within the spending authority of the budget as approved. I mean, it, uh, to, to that extent, right, there's no threshold dollar amount under this section of the charter. It's appropriating any money. So I'm talking about, like, for instance, um, you need more paper and you thought you were only going to use three reams, now you need four reams. That's not budgeted under your analysis um, and would require a reappropriation for the purchase of that fourth ream. So in other words, we don't need to do budget amendments for fire trucks or the other equipment that we do budget amendments for, for large expenditures that we did not anticipate in that budgeted year, even in relation to using general fund money. So the only difference here is Owen hasn't submitted to us a budget amendment proposal for this $45,000 vehicle. I, I, I would be concerned trying to tell the taxpayer, oh, this is just like buying another ream of paper, which is, well, office, which is in the office uh, budget. And buying paper for the office budget that we budgeted money for is expected, however, if that money gets used up and you have to buy, and it especially exceeds 7,500, you would have to ask for a budget amendment to exceed that office's uh, budget to buy supplies. So um, Owen is uh, things related to the city fleet, something that, um, because this is not, we're not buying Mark as a car, and then he has that car. This is adding a car to the city fleet for his use. 
that's very different than buying him a car. Um, and and I, I'm offended at the idea that we are intending to just buy Marcus a car as a benefit. Excuse me, I'm speaking. Don't don't put your hand up at me. I didn't say a word. You were so starting if you're to. Gonna, if you're going to attack me, you better wait till I say something. Ooh, uh. We are uh. we are adding a vehicle to the fleet. Has there been uh, is there precedent or Mike adding something to the fleet? Is that something that would require a budget amendment if there is money available? in the general fund for that? Both Owen and Mike. Have we ever done that? I guess the bottom line would be there has to be a there has to be an appropriation available for the purchase. So in this case in the in the line item that we we would traditionally buy like the other admin fleet vehicles, um, that would be a capital outlay in a general administrative department. So in that department is um, an appropriation for capital outlay um, that is unused for the current fiscal year. And the, you know, the reason it's unused, it was appropriated for, let's say, roof repairs. And the timing of that project, there's been a delay in the materials being shipped. So there's an unused appropriation. And that was the, that was the, um, the plan to use that. Um, appropriation so just a reprioritization and Mike would you um, do you have any input on that sorry can you repeat that the that if um, if you're adding to the fleet and there's money available in the general fund is that a new appropriation well again you know I, <clears throat> I'll go back and 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 uh, kind of restate what what I what I, how I read the, um, the charter, which is um, if there's been an appropriation of money, so for example, if you have a general fund that is unrestricted, and, and I'll defer to Owen on this because he's certainly more knowledgeable about um, the accounting side of that. Um, but just on the, the legal side, if you approve a budget, which includes say a million dollars of unrestricted funds, um, then I suppose you could uh, use that fund the general fund for those expenditures now I, I don't know how the city has dealt with it over these many years in terms of those expenditures all i'm saying is that unless and until you have to uh, amend the budget i would not view that as um as an additional appropriation if there's money available in the existing budget um to purchase things whatever those things might be now that that's apart from the policy issue on whether somebody wants council approval to purchase those things. But I just don't uh, I just don't view that as an additional appropriation of money. So we in the municipal context, things get brought to the public body all the time that, hey, we need to buy X and uh, we want you to approve X and um, even though it wasn't specifically enumerated as a line item on a budget, there's money in the budget to pay for that item. There is not a simultaneous budget amendment for that because it would not result in a deficit balance in any one of those funds. Okay. Mike, I would, I would point out that we do our uh, capital improvement plan every year looking out six years. When Owen needs new police cars or trucks to the fleet, those are put in the plan and then anticipated for the year's budget that we plan to do that. So the council is on notice exactly what Ooh. fleet additions there are going to be, what equipment additions are going to be. We have never in the past, what, five or six years I've been on now, put in a vehicle for the manager's exclusive use. And I would respectfully disagree with council member T.I. Shippers. The only reason for this car is the city manager's exclusive use. It's not part of the fleet. It's not anticipated to be used by anybody else. It has one purpose. That addition of a vehicle to the vehicles for the city has not been, been anticipated in any CIP plan and it has not been budgeted for the 2022-2023 year. 
So is there anyone else on staff who has a vehicle that they use that is primarily for their use? The uh, public safety director, because he is a first responder for both police and fire, does have uh, a what would be called a subdued or unmarked uh, response vehicle um, for him to use in any way he wishes, um, including uh, uh, a vehicle that's not a traditional police or fire, fire response vehicle. Uh, our utilities director also has uh, a take-home vehicle as well as other supervisory related staff um, in different shapes and forms from uh, uh, compact to mid-size SUVs to full-size pickup trucks. I also recall that you mentioned having a vehicle with that can carry multiple passengers would be something that if somebody else in the in the city needed to use for something could is that sure but I you know I think and I'm by the way um, it kills me that councils fighting with each other over a potential benefit for me this is certainly not anything that I had had in terms of an intended outcome between the relationships that you guys have forged and I've worked hard to try to to build with with council members over the years so I, I apologize for putting you guys in a position where you're where you're upset um, and I, I think it's important that I that I vocalize that and hope everyone can uh, just breathe and and talk but um, without a doubt you know the intent of this is a benefit it's a benefit to the city manager the um, city manager position included a vehicle uh, benefit uh, my request this year was to have the allowance uh, replaced by a vehicle itself versus a, versus an allowance and that's why we're we're going through you know, essentially this exercise the uh, point of it would be to have the vehicle essentially for my exclusive use for both working and non-working hours. All that being said, it's still a vehicle that would be used <coughs> by the city, and certainly if there's something that's happening that would require somebody else to use it for some kind of activity that would, that, you know, city activity that would be um, that would be appropriate to do so. And then likewise, myself, you know, I would be using it for. Uh, city activities where it would involve multiple uh, multiple people in the vehicle and then once it does get fully absorbed back into the fleet at such time that my use with it is over for whatever the reason may be uh, we would then have another um, uh, vehicle with a different type of utilitarian opportunity we don't have anything like that currently in the fleet right now so it would, it would add a different piece to it um, so I, I don't know if that directly addressed the question that was raised, but I tried to. I'd like, so. I'd like to clarify one thing as far as your, your superintendents with take-home vehicles. Yep. <clears throat> they have them because they're on call 24 hours a day. Right. And they're not allowed to use their vehicles for personal use. It drives you to work, back home, and it sits there in your driveway in case you get a call, which Jeff Deaton, mm -hmm. Ken Payne do on a regular basis, to go to a problem. So there, I'd just like to clarify that. Sure. Thank you. And thank you. First, uh, Marcus, and release your comment. There is absolutely nothing wrong with an ask. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about that, that's what negotiation for compensation is for. So there's nothing offensive about <laughs> an ask, OK? I think that with that ask, we have fiduciary responsibilities. And that is the reason, for my opinion, I was going to bring up, because I did look up make some calls the vehicles that currently get to go home with our employees are for business use only and for emergency use only and I was told told for example if a police officer feels something's going to happen at night that he's going to have to be on call for he has to get Adam's permission to be able to take that vehicle home but that vehicle can never be used for personal use and, and I'm going to raise, and Mike, Mike disagree with me, but I'm sorry. If someone has a vehicle provided by the city and they're using it personally, say to go home uh, to Ohio to visit family, and they get in an accident and they're in a city car on their own time, we are exposed to liability. And, and I don't think we can take that type of risk and, and expose the taxpayers to that type of risk 
from a potential uh, lawsuit. And, and again, I'll just say, we have not anticipated, even in our capital improvement plan, adding a vehicle for the exclusive use of the manager. I know we can say, well, if someone else wanted to use it, they could use it. The purpose of buying this vehicle is for the city manager. Let, let's not even <laughs> mince words on that. And public safety director's vehicle was in the CIP the year before we purchased that. And it's for emergency responder use only. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would like to see um, the vehicle put in the CIP. I would like to see it, uh, you know, that we purchase it next year. Um, I think we need to acquire it, and we can have the contract discussions when we do next time, but I think we need to move forward, and, you know, hopefully this doesn't blow up next year if everybody's generally in support of, you know, of, of or generally supportive of acquiring the vehicle, um, that that's the direction we move towards. And then... Um, yeah, I, I don't want to lose sight of it. I I think that we need to do it, but I'm agreeable to waiting and, and dropping it in for next year. Yeah. If everybody will agree to that. Good discussion. Okay. Um, if nothing else, then we'll go ahead and adjourn. Thank you.